Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll look at a Dynas lithium ion phosphate, 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour, total of 1280 watt hours. It's the model AR 1.2. Let's get started. Thanks for watching again. Today's video, we'll look at this battery. Ta da! It's still a little warm because I did already some tests with it. So, a little shiny. Pretty cool, to be honest. I like that, even though it's a, this kind of standard housing, Group 31. Let me tell you more about this. We do have this battery included. We do have them eight bolts included um, in here. We do have a little manual included as well, user manual. And we do have in this little user manual, of course, on the first page in this case, right there. Ding! We do have included information about the dimensions. Additionally, here's a picture of what I have online and advertised it with, as well as the most important information for me at least, um, charging voltage, it's the same as always, 4.6 volts, uh, maximum continuous charge and discharge current. It is 100 amps, that's what it's advertised with. It's not more, it's not less, it's 100 amp. No seconds, nothing, so we should be able to have that continuously pushed and pulled. So basically both. So yeah, that's pretty good to see. But we'll test that later as well in the high uh, discharge test. Just to make sure that what's advertised is also what we are able to pull. So that means, let's get a closer look at the specification um, as I start already. So this is the price currently online. And as of today, when I'm doing this video and making this video, there's no disco discount code or anything like that. And by the way, I want to refer to uh, Mr. Offscript's video up there. Uh, and he had a definitely better price at the time he recorded it. So it's all, as always, Amazon is having, or the seller is adding some vouchers, some coupons and stuff like that. So you can profit from it sometimes and sometimes not. Today is the day, at least when it's when I record a video, it's not, but it was in there a couple days ago. So I usually try to do screenshots uh, throughout the time when I record those videos and before. So but anyways, let's continue with uh, what it's advertised with besides that's the dimensions I, I just mentioned. It does also say that it comes, where was that? I saw that create A cells, at least in a, yeah, it does say uh, create A plus cells. Pretty cool. It does say low temperature cutoff protection below 32F, zero Celsius, it will stop charging. I do not have an app for this one, so there's no Bluetooth connected to this one. Uh, we have to test it with ice pack, which we saw it's going up to not minus nine Celsius. And it's restoring and recovering charging at uh, 41F, 5C. And then, then, then it says uh, self-developed 100 amp BMS, overcharge, over discharge, over current, short circuit, high temp, moisture, proof, dust proof, and salt spray resistant. So it doesn't talk about low temp cutoff here, but it points it out on a low temperature cutoff protection separate um, image. So we'll do that uh, test later. High performance A plus crate cell up to 6,000 cycles, deep cycle at 80%. And then we can see here the last pictures they say it's a smart 100 amp BMS. Um, smart stands for me usually for Bluetooth. I've seen manufacturers using smart for that the BMS is smart enough to protect when it's triggering an overcurrent, over, overcurrent or over voltage protection. So um, yeah, the wording counts. IP65, low temp protection is also, also mentioned here. Max of 4P4S, um, that's uh, information which I sometimes don't see anymore. <laughs> online at least at uh, Amazon. So this one can do up to four parallel and four series. All right, I would say that's about the specification. Next test is a capacity test. Here we have the Dynas with 101.42 amp hours. It's a battery, as you can see. Coming back from the capacity test, which it did pass a little bit over 100 amp hour. So a little bit short. I usually like to see more, but it's advertised 100 amp hour, so it did pass. That's not without question. All right, here we are with the Denise battery. We'll do the high discharge test. 
right away. So let me get started. And as you remember, we have a maximum continuous discharge of 100 amp hours. So we'll try to achieve that and see how far we can get. So that shouldn't be a problem at all. So you can see this one is a continuous discharge. So. Well, it's not a limit yet, but let's see if we can get, get even more. And as always, when you go that high and it doesn't shut off because there's no overcurrent protection, that means the BMS is not shutting off early enough. You can go with advertised. You need fuses, very important, so you see that. Let's go even higher and see what we can do. That's probably just the inverter telling us, yeah, we are pretty low on the battery. But yeah, you can see, okay. Let's see how high we can go. And now the inverter did shut off some ports. The inverter did shut off, I guess. Uh, nice, so we are even at 300 amps, so that's higher than it is advertised. Um, it's good to see that you are able to pull that much, but always remember that also means you need fuses because the BMS might not be able to handle that for a long time. So all those kind of things, but um, I hope you that's the maximum I can pull at the moment, so let's continue with the video. And coming back from the high discharge test, well, use fuses to protect your cables, everything what's connected to the battery, just to make sure you're not pulling more than your setup is capable of. And this battery is only advertised, only, at 100 amp continuous discharge. So that I, we saw shortly 300 amp it's great to see that you can shortly pull that, but don't continuously do that. It's not good for entire setup, um, especially when it's not rated that one that much. So we'll see how much the BMS is maybe rated. If you can, you know, take a look inside. So that means we'll do the teardown now. I'll open it up and then I'll fill you back in. Okay, let's see what we're having here. It was definitely more difficult than I thought, but oh, there we are. Ta da! That's how it looks like. So let's point out the obvious stuff. And positive side, six gauge wire. We do have, oh wow, one, two, three, four, five. We have five 12 gauge wire. On the negative side, going to the terminal, it's clued back here. I don't know if you see that here, clue blob around, not on top. So you could still probably undo it. Hydraulic recrimped over here. The positive, and let me fill you in better. Here we have holes in this epoxy board, which is seriously, it's very thick, thicker than the ones I've seen so far. It has cutouts, really good cutouts actually. And we'll, I'll try to take it out in a minute, but I can see here we have those, I would assume that those are machine soldered here, which I usually don't like to see in general. I like the bolts more, but it is what it is. We have um, them here on, on the side to the terminal and we have them also here on the side going to the battery actually. And it's a Saihang BMS. And with that being being set, let's see if I can get it out. I did get it out. Up. Let me do it this way. Very cool. Okay, here we are. That's the battery pack. So we do have, all right, we do have great power cells it looks like. They are manufactured last year and capacity is 135 amp hour. Well, about those information, I don't know. What we can see here is definitely we have a lot of glue. Here we have tape, tape, tape. We do have most likely uh, the temperature sensor. Yeah, temperature sensor. The temperature sensor is going 
over here through this hole. Same like the balance leads coming over here. And then it's right underneath here. So I will see if I can get that one out or if it's, yep, there it is. Nice. Nice. I can just take it out like it. There's glue and whatnot um, to keep everything else in place. I can see that there is some tension here on the balance leads. Those two at least. We have the bus bars which has a hump, so there's contraction and expansion possible. We have those vents which are free and accessible. And we have thick positive minus everything else and then a lot of glue underneath here. We do have to finish up the picture. We do have those straps going all the way over and we see that there's some kind of steel or aluminum covering so it's protected and this band is not rubbing on the cells itself. So now I want to touch it because the cells are still having some good temperature from the high... Oh yeah, definitely. Wow, the cells are still pretty hot. At least on this side. This side is warmer than the other, at least feels like. Anyways, that's a high discharge test I did, so I'm not wondering. What I'm doing now, um, I mean, you can see everything here. You can see the top, you can see also this side. So everything is pretty straightforward. Um, also a very interesting, it's a Group 31 housing, but in theory, in theory, you could place this also in a Group 24. Well, it looks like, I would say so, yeah. Um, one thing to note, there's no, nothing in between the cells. The cells are touching each other here. And you can tell that this one, this one is a little more uneven put together, but everything is held together um, with the band and straps. And then we have too much glue, more glue just for the BMS again. All right, let me set up the high and low temp cutoff test. And then we'll go from there and see what this BMS is capable of, but um, as Mr. Ofgrid pointed a couple things out already, uh, he knows those BMS. I'm not super familiar with those ones so far. I haven't used a lot of them and I haven't seen a lot of them. JBD is more what I've seen so far. And bummer that this one doesn't have Bluetooth. I would love to see it because most likely you could probably use it or have it installed here as well. So regardless of what I want to point out is also 100 amp. Um, it is stated here. On the BMS. So let me set up our high and low temp cutoff test. All right, low temp cutoff test, and there we are. It does work. So low temp cutoff test does work. It's good to see. And it's coming back. Let's do the high temp cutoff test really quick. Whoa, and there it is already. That was quick. Nice, okay. Coming back, please. Look here, there it is. All right. Low temp, high temp cutoff test. Low temp cutoff test with the ice pack is always the preferred method because that one is not going as slow as a duster spray is going. So this is good. This is a more real environment. So it passed this test. So you can see this one also is using a lot of glue. Um, by the way, I think they have used, yeah, I think it's glue which they have in here. So it is not, I thought it might be um, a rubber gasket. No, this is hard glue. This is not a rubber gasket. This is hard glue to have in here. So remember the IP65 rating? Um, there's nothing going in, nothing going out really. But yeah, let me know in the comment section below what you think about it. Because I'm done with my video now. Thanks for watching. Cheers!